All right, welcome to Friday, everybody. Uh, today we're going to finish off framing and start talking about um, the next uh, major issue in computer science, social issue in computer science. Uh, so we're going to start off today with uh, one of the most depressing stories uh, ever in computer science, which is the story of the Therac 25. It is a radiation machine, or was a radiation machine, and the uh, the Therac 25 used um, high powered radiation to destroy cancer cells, and they were building upon the success of two earlier machines, the Therac 6 and the Therac 20, that had physical interlocks that provided safety. So basically. When the um, system was in, it had a low power mode and a high power mode and kind of like a flashlight mode. The flashlight mode would just kind of show where the, the thing was targeting. And it had sort of a physical shield that would prevent um, people from being exposed from too much radiation. And they decided they could cut down the cost by doing the interlock in software instead. And uh, spoiler alert, they, they, they could not. There was a bug in the software, and every so often a person would get irritated by um, direct exposure to the radiation, the high-powered radiation beam, and uh, they they killed uh, several people due to radiation poisoning as a result of it. One person who survived said that... Um, when the radiation dream was going on, it felt like somebody was shooting him with lightning. And he leapt off the table and went running around as the person, the technician kept shooting the radiation beam at him. Because the technician wasn't paying attention to what was going on. It would just say error, they would override the error and shoot radiation again at the, at the, at the patient. The, um, there were two different bugs that were in it. Um, one was uh, in flashlight mode when you know it's just supposed to be targeting the thing. Uh, occasionally, the uh, thing could be exposing them to radiation as well. And the other one was uh, when it was in high powered mode. There's supposed to be this shield in front that would uh, prevent uh, the full amount of radiation from affecting the person. And if you entered um, low power mode and then change it to high powered mode and it, or vice versa. I don't remember which one. If the person who's entering the commands at the console changed which mode it was in fast enough, then the system wouldn't respond correctly. And you could actually um, cause it to be in the high powered mode without the appropriate shielding turned on and, and kill people. And, and so several people died as the result of these people, assuming that they would be able to safely, always safely prevent the software from uh, irritating people. And they could not. It's an example of framing. And in fact, they were so confident in their software and uh, not justifiably confident. They just were confident. They were so confident in their software, they told their the uh, the technicians that their software was perfect had no bugs in it um, when errors occurred the manual didn't even have explanations for the errors it would just say malfunction and the and and malfunctions actually happen all the time so the technicians were trained to just override the malfunction and shoot the person again and in most cases that was just fine um, in the case where you were murdering somebody with radiation poisoning, was it was not fine. And so they were so confident the system was working right, they didn't even bother explaining what error was occurring at the time. It just said malfunction with a number and no explanation of what the number meant. And after people started dying from the software bug, they were still so confident in their software, they said, no, it couldn't possibly be our machine that was the problem. And this is obviously an example of framing, right? Like they were, you know, they had these goggles on. They were like, our software engineers are so good, there cannot possibly be a bug that was killing people. And so the thing went on for a while. 
and killed more people as a result of it. So. Their frame was the assumption their software was good. And that frame was built upon the success of their previous software. Because they had software from the Therac 6 and the Therac 20. And so, because those systems worked, and those were different systems, right? They had a hardware shield that would physically shut it down and not allow people to be irritated because they copied and pasted code from a completely different hardware system. They were like, well, it worked for that one, so it has to work for this one. There weren't any problems with those. So there weren't any problems with these. They didn't even test it. Can you imagine that? You've got a radiation device and they didn't actually test it with the configuration of the software and the hardware. They just assumed it would work. So, um, my guy really said copy paste. What's, what's funny about copy and paste? It, it's, uh, it, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what they did. They, they duplicated the software from a previous machine and they're like, well, it works for that. It'll work for this, even though our machine's different. <laughs> uh, is it normal to copy and paste code? Yeah, you'd be surprised how often people write code by going to Stack Overflow or one of these other websites and be like, I don't know what the code on there does, but it claims that it does what I need. And so they just copy and paste it into their thing and they're like, okay, it appears to work. It must be fine. Um, I personally don't believe you should ever have code that you don't really understand what it does. You know what I mean? So, and, if, and that doubly goes for medical devices, especially medical devices that shoot radiation at people, right? Beta radiation, yeah, which is, um, high powered electrons essentially. Uh, feeling a little lazy, got a new machine, I'm just going to copy paste. I fully trust it. Yeah, they were so confident in their software. They didn't test it. They didn't tell the operators, you know, what to watch out for. Um, their solution, by the way, when, when it, uh, when they discovered the first bug, which was if you entered, um, one of the modes and then quickly use the up arrow key to go up and change it and go back down. And if you were able to do that within eight seconds, it would, it would kill somebody. Their solution was to take the keycap for the keyboard off on the up arrow <clears throat> key on the keyboard. That was their solution. Just pluck the pluck the keycap off. There you go. Put a little duct tape over it. Don't allow somebody to hit up arrow. There you go. Problem solved. Source, trust me, bro. Yeah. Yeah, so it was, it's it's honestly horrific if you read the stories of these people that were being irritated and uh, they would go into treatment and then come back days later having radiation poisoning and die. Like it, it's, you know, because you don't die immediately from radiation poisoning, right? Your cells die and you don't even know it yet, right? It's absolutely horrific. So, um, yeah, the, the company uh, is a Canadian company. Um, ACL, yeah, ACL. Um, yeah. So, uh, we're not going to do this assignment. We got, we got another thing for you to do. So, as like Fallout, yeah, yeah, it kind of reminds me of um, what was it Vault Tech, the uh, the company in the in the Fallout universe, how they just sort of have this cavalier disregard for people's safety you know it's uh, absolutely horrible okay so um so what we are going to talk about is um yeah another kind of depressing topic um but um yeah the reason why we do all this by the way the reason why it's considered important uh, by computer science as a field to talk about this with you is because uh, we impact the world, right? Look at that bright mode. I think I need to turn the 
you can see the glow coming off of this monitor. Um, <laughs> interesting. Give me not. Give me not the glowing. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, one of the downsides to all these HDR monitors I have is you can literally, it's like somebody shining a bright flashlight on your face. Um, dark mode. Everything creates the thing they dread. Ultron. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. There you go. So that should be a little more comfortable for you guys, too. Yeah, so the reason why, you know, we, you know, speaking as computer science professors, the reason why we want people to take this class is for kind of two reasons. One, uh, for non-computer science people, we hope that by doing, like, these scratch assignments and things like that, that it kind of, like, piques your interest in computer science and uh, sort of an easy on-ramp into programming and things like that. But also a lot of people in this class... I finished computer science and are just taking this class because they need it. Um, the other reason why we like it is because um, a lot of times we care about if you can get something done and not if you should get something done. Okay. So when, when I was in grad school, we studied facial recognition, right? And it's a hard problem, you know, having a thing that identifies a face and, you know, um, and says, oh, that's Bill, right? The thing is, like, there's no discussion of ethics, you know, consequences of it, you know, what would happen if you gave this technology to a tyrannical government, right? That's a crime against Skyrim and its people, um. So, yeah, um, you know, the UK uses it to identify criminals. Uh, they, they stop and harass people on the streets. Um, you can watch this YouTube video that, uh, um, I don't know if this is actually the one. I, I've, I've spent a lot of time looking at the facial recognition issue. And uh, they have cameras in, in the UK all over the place. It's it's uh, very much a police state if you just look at the amount of cameras the UK has. And um, and so they will tag people as criminals using their facial recognition software. And then police will go by and hassle them, right? And so there's this 14-year-old uh, kid, a uh, black kid, gets har harassed by the police in front of his friends, completely innocent, you know. And that's just considered part of the price of living in a free society or something. I don't know. Like, uh, they've got, in America, we've got facial recognition rolling out at airports. Uh, China uses facial recognition extensively. Um, it's like, um, if you're scratching your face, you can get a ticket in China because they think that you're on your cell phone. Um, yeah. And so in, in, in computer science classes though, we never talked about the consequences of our, of our software, right? The, the question was always, how can we get this software to be more accurate? Right? That was it. All we cared about really was we've got this problem. We need to overcome the problem. How do we accurately recognize faces never once a, con a, a discussion of like well what if uh, this was used to harass uh, 14 year old black kids in the UK nope not once not a single minute of that whole thing was dedicated to like you know should we do this or not you know so um So that's why this class is important. Okay. The, the software that we make really does affect the world. You know, uh, if you look at, you know, what people are talking about right now, the big issue right now is social networks 
and if social networks are a force for good or evil um, right um, that's another example of software being made without thinking about what's this going to do to our country it's going to do to the world you know Facebook's got a billion users maybe they don't really know how many users they have but they think they have about a billion users which is bigger than like most countries yeah and I'm reading a book right now uh, by some Stanford um, professors and they see the fundamental problem in computer science as being the mindset the mindset of Skynet I am inevitable <laughs> Uh, the mindset of optimization, right? This mindset in computer science of like always trying to make things uh, more optimal, more the software faster and more accurate and not thinking about like, what's that going to do to society? Like one example they gave was a, a company called Soylent where they decided to optimize the problem of eating because they figured that eating was an inefficient waste of time. And so they came up with this like nutritional slurry that's just basically a, a bunch of vitamins and minerals and carbs and fats and proteins uh, that's just optimally mixed for human survival it tastes like shock or something I don't know and named Soylent because um, it's from lentils soy lentils but not realizing there was a movie back in the 70s called Soylent Green which was you know Soil and green as people, you know. I don't know. I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's been fifty years, so it's people. It's people, and so they named their company after that because I don't know. Yeah, marketing. I don't know, but yeah. So they're trying to optimize the problem of, of eating, and they and they they said we don't even we're not even opposed to the notion of people optimizing the problem of eating. It's just that mindset, that mindset of like it's a waste of time to eat food, you know. We're, we're just going to try to bypass it as much as possible uh, so that you can code more, you know. And there's uh, neuro hackers in the, um, in the Bay Area that are trying to optimize the way they need to sleep, right? And they take various, um, well, there's a variety of approaches to it, you know. You can uh, use meditation and other techniques like that to reduce the amount of sleep you need. Uh, they take uh, neophilic drugs, you know, to cause neural growth and things like that. And um, the problem of eating. Yeah, the problem of eating is that you just waste too much time of your day eating. All that time you spend socializing with your friends over meals. Um, yeah, let's just optimize that away and, and just so we can focus more time on being productive. You know, and, and they're like, we don't even, you know, they're not even saying like that's, you know, ethically problematical. It's just indicative of the mindset of Silicon Valley. The Silicon Valley mindset is all about optimizing. Um, one of the um, other companies they talk about um, was writing an AI bot to help you get out of parking tickets. And so he talked with various lawyers and uh, basically you have a chat bot and the chat bot will answer, you know, talk to you if you have a parking ticket and give you a form letter to send to you know, the parking officials to get out of getting a, a parking ticket. And uh, again, they're like, you know, we don't even think that's wrong necessarily, but, you know, what are the consequences of that? You know, what happens when, um, you know, just if, if you just take that to the extreme, what happens if people can park anywhere without getting a parking ticket? You know, what would happen to society, right? You know what I mean? Chaos? Maybe. I mean, you know. Um, yeah, it's not like in my neighborhood we really police where people park or anything like that and people generally do okay but like look at um, um, Steve Jobs do you guys know who Steve Jobs is? one of the founders of Apple yeah. Steve Jobs parked in a handicapped spot every day dude wasn't handicapped is parked in a handicapped spot every day because he could. And he told the city, Cupertino, the Bay Area, he said, if you give me a parking ticket for parking in a handicapped spot, I'm going to have Apple move. 
so they never ticketed him. Every day, he would pull in with his uh, new Mercedes. He always had a uh, a new Mercedes. He didn't like having a license plate, so he would uh, lease a new Mercedes with no license plate. And once it hit the time limit, when you had to get a new license plate, it's like three months or something, he would go back to the dealership, turn it in, and get a new one. And so he was constantly rotating through new cars because he didn't like having a license plate so that he couldn't get ticketed. Right, if you run through a red light, there's no license plate, right? And so he would flaunt deliberately uh, the parking rules. So, um, sounds petty? Yeah, I, I am not a fan of Steve Jobs. I'm a fan of Steve Wozniak. He was the other Steve that started Apple. Steve Wozniak is a nerd's nerd. He is a cool dude. Um, some of my students broke into his dressing room, and he was very cool with it. Um, so uh, he came to he came to Fresno a few years back to give it a talk, and um, uh, so the the president of the ACM you're on the ACM Discord right now, uh, this guy named uh, Mason Tuanta he uh, um, walked past security uh, Wozniak security he he was carrying an Apple computer, and so he just acted like he belonged he just walked in, and then he knocks on Steve Wozniak's door he's like uh, hey Steve I'm a big fan would you mind signing my Apple computer. And Waz looks at it, it was like one of those, um, the IMAX, the, the, like the candy colored IMAX from like 20 years ago. Waz was like, well, that's, you know, a, a machine after I left Apple. And Mason's like, I know, but I don't have an Apple too, so would you, you know, mind signing? He's like, yeah, sure, absolutely. Signs it, and then uh, the girl that was uh, with him, she wasn't my student, but uh, she sat in on my classes. And uh, she goes in, she's like, Steve, you're on Dancing with the Stars, would you mind dancing with me? He's like, I'd love to, and so, she posted a video of herself, like, dancing with Steve Wozniak and stuff like that, yeah. So, you know, just act like you belong, you know, and <laughs> that's the lesson, I guess. I don't know. And, uh, yeah. So, um, fake it till you make it, yeah. And so, yeah, anyway, the point is, is that, um, the point is, is that we, we talk about these problems and we don't really, we, I mean, collectively computer science people don't really think about the consequences very much. And that's why this class exists. Okay. So uh, even if you're not a computer science major, it's still probably a good habit to get into like thinking about the consequences of your actions. You know, let's say you go into farming, you know, we're, we live in Fresno and it's a big farming community. It's a big industry around here. You know, what are the consequences of, um, of growing um, crops that um, don't produce seeds? You know, like the whole Monsanto thing, right? Where they will produce uh, crops that have pesticides built into them. And uh, if uh, you har harvest the seeds and replant them, some of them don't have seeds at all. Some of them, if you do that, Monsanto will sue you because you have to agree to buy your seeds from Monsanto and not use the naturally occurring seeds. And even if they blow into another person's field and they just grow there and you know about it, they want a lawsuit against a farmer for letting Monsanto crops blow into his field and grow naturally and harvest them because he didn't pay Monsanto for it. So it doesn't matter really which industry you're in, you know, all this stuff has consequences and I'm not, I'm not anti-technology. Rather, obviously, I'm not anti-technology. I am just for people thinking about what's, you know, what are the outcomes of these things. Just all I really want is for you to sit there and be like, hmm, what could happen if we succeed? Because <laughs> most people don't think about that, you know? Most people think about what will happen if we fail. I'm going to lose my house, you know, I'm going to lose my car, you know? Most people don't think about what would happen if we succeed. You know, or, or, you know, if they do, it's like, oh, we'll go to Vegas, you know, have a big party. And, um, yeah, just most people just don't think about these things, right? And so Joy Boyle um, uh, is an MIT researcher who found that facial recognition didn't work as well with people with darker skin. And uh, why? Well, because as it turns out, IBM and these other companies making facial recognition software just didn't test it on black people. You know, or people with darker skin. And um, so um, 
you know, so she worked with them on, you know, improving their recognition. Which, again, is I don't know if that's the best outcome, you know, but if you, if it's going to cause police to, you know, hassle, you know, 14-year-old black kids on the street, yeah, it's probably a good idea for it at least to be accurate, I guess. I don't know. Uh, although if it's actually inaccurate, then maybe they'll just stop using it, you know, which might have a, a better outcome in the long run than it being accurate, you know. Because, you know, if it's just criminals are, you know, saying, hey, man, they, they caught me using fish. Like, people aren't going to be are, aren't, aren't going to be mad about that. You know what I mean? Like, if, if, if facial recognition was 100% accurate, um, you know, and, and criminals, man, they caught me using facial recognition. Like, people aren't going to care, you know. So, you know, there's... Yeah, so the upshot of all this is that software has a real-world impact. Okay. And... And again, even if you're not a computer science major, whatever company you work for, most companies have a real world impact and you need to think about, well, what if it works? You know, what if, you know, whatever it is our company does is wildly successful. What if everybody adopts this bot to not pay parking tickets? What's the consequences of it? How are, you know, how is poor San Francisco going to pay its uh, BART officials $300,000 a year if they don't have all that sweet, sweet parking money. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I know it's, it would be tragic, you know, because I, I think San Francisco gets half its money from issuing BS parking tickets to people. They, they do street sweeping one day a week on every street in San Francisco. And so it's this constant dance of like this road and you have to move your car and then move your car and, and they have two hour parking like everywhere in the area where I used to live. And so you have to constantly be moving your car and there's no parking of course. And so it's a super big hassle. And then the, the cops come through and ticket constantly. They don't, they don't actually stop crime. They don't care about crime. <laughs> that's not, that's not their concern. It's just parking tickets. Anyway. So, um, Yes, yeah, so Coded Bias is a, is a good movie on the on the subject of this, and you you can see these uh, these links here. Okay, so let's talk about AI. Um, so AI, Ultron, right? Uh, no, uh, we we don't have Ultron. Right? You know, if you haven't seen the the Age of Ultron movie, you're not missing anything. It's not very good. Probably one of the weakest uh, uh, Avenger movies. Um, sorry. But it is. Um, uh, the other Avenger movies were just better. If you want to leave the class now, I'll sign your drop form. It's okay. So uh, we don't have we don't have AI. We don't have uh, AI in the sense of like it can create a human brain and it can you know you know talk, have a conversation and learn on it. We don't have that kind of AI. What we have is. Um, what we have is AI that is very task dependent, like very good at like recognizing somebody's face or AI. They run an AI to figure out which UK students would have gotten into Oxford or Cambridge or whatever, had they taken the normal tests that they normally do, which they didn't do because of the pandemic. And so what they did was they wrote an AI that would guess based on your past performance, if you would have passed your uh, A-levels or whatever. And uh, and there was this huge outcry against it because, like, you're just guessing, that, you know, like, you don't know, you don't, like, you don't know how I'd actually do. Maybe I got better this year, you know? And so they, they were just going to guess based on your, your performance through junior level, I guess, to see if you get into Oxford or not, you know? So they, they turned that one off after a while. Um, AI software is used for the algorithm. You know, you've heard of probably of the YouTube algorithm. Um, YouTube's like, hey, you watch this one video, here's some more videos along the same lines. Um, if I uh, open up uh, YouTube right now, let's see what YouTube thinks. It's always interesting to see. Okay, Europa Universalis 4, Dave Chappelle on woke culture, uh, Japanese Inca, Japanese Inca, Japanese Inca, uh, a girl who does who does acoustic covers of like eighties and nineties music, a guy reacting to Japanese music, uh, 
how to use uh, Git LFS, which is um, large um, file storage for Git, which is a version control software. And uh, here's Europe Universalis, and here's Dave Chappelle on the uh, controversy going on right now. So that, that is what YouTube thinks that I am interested in right now. Okay. And the algorithm recommends sad music, you know you're down. I don't know, like, for some reason, like, over the last couple months, I'm, I'm a very happy person, and um, for whatever reason, I've just been, like, really into Inca music recently. And so the algorithm has recognized it and has been flooding my recommendations with Inca music. And so, uh, which is, like, Japanese uh, music about leaving your lover and going home to Hokkaido, or about... Uh, fishermen dying out on, at the sea or, um, you know, relationships coming to an end, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Pretty good stuff though. Pretty good music. Okay. So anyway, so that's AI, right? Uh, they do AI to choose who gets hired and fired, right? Think about that. Somebody's writing software. If you go to work for one of the companies that uses the software, somebody right now, this second is working on code where if they put a bug in it, you get fired. All right? Real world, real world consequences. Yeah. Um, even worse, there is sentencing software. So there's sentencing software called Compass, which I think might be in the slide or not. Um, that when you commit a crime, the software looks at you and says, okay, uh, it's a software to help judges out. Should this person get the minimum or the maximum or somewhere in between? Should you get two years in prison or 10? And a lot of times judges defer to the software because they figure, well, it's software. It must be reliable, right? It's the same thing with the radiation thing, right? Well, it's software. It must be correct. It must know better than me. And, uh, you know, as it turns out, it, was sentencing black people to prison a lot more than white people. Same stats, just only difference, race, you know. Oops. Real world consequences. Yeah. There's software that will filter your resume. If you apply to one of these positions that gets thousands of people applying for a job, they'll use some sort of screening tool to screen out your resume, right? Which maybe isn't that bad because, you know, the worst thing with that is that you just don't get a job offer, right? Not ne nearly as serious as like firing somebody or sending them to prison for longer, right? Um, slap bass, yeah, bass. Still, though, you should choose because of your resume. Yeah. And so now, when you make a resume, you have to make sure that it's readable by AI and it's got your keywords that you want them to know about, like in an easy to read format and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, promoting teachers based on AI. Yeah. Who should see ads for housing? That's what got Facebook in trouble, by the way, is that they were uh, showing ads for apartment buildings based on race and family status. So if you had kids, you would not see these openings for housing in the area. And that's uh, FMLA, or not FMLA, uh, the, whatever the Fair Housing Act is called. Um, violation of that. You can't discriminate for housing based on if somebody has kids or not. Or race, for that matter. And so Facebook was doing that, right? Because you can target... Uh, so tar first of all, Facebook would just learn what sort of people are in the market for housing, like college students. And so... You know, prioritize showing college students versus married people uh, housing ads, which is uh, technically against the law. And then I think the people advertising, can, you could also select show me people with these demographics and offer the ad to them. It's also housing discrimination. Oops. Not oops, that was actually deliberate, deliberate discrimination. Uh, what news Facebook shows to you? This is actually the big hot topic in our society right now, right? So. Um, it used to be on Facebook that it would just show chronologically everything your friends posted. So if, um, you know, your friend posted a shot of them holding a cat, that would show up chronologically and you could, and your, your feed would just be everything in reverse chronological order. 
And you'd go through it until you hit the, you know, oh, I recognize that. Okay, I'm now up to date. And then you just close Facebook. And they didn't like that. They didn't like the fact that they would, you know, if you opened up Facebook an hour from now, you know, there's probably four or five new posts from your friends. You read through them, click like a couple times, close it out. They didn't like that. And so what they did was they started mixing up. So you can't actually know when you're done with Facebook now. And they'll also suggest news stories and things like that. And uh, a lot of people think that that is like, you know, undermining democracy and stuff like that. So, um, Yeah. Um, and so, and, and so one of the frames, and this is why framing is so important, is that a lot of people in computer science think, well, if we just don't have race be an input into our system, it'll be fine. But guess what? If you do machine learning, a lot of times it can deduce somebody's race without them actually explicitly putting race in. Okay. So if you have, let's say a zip code entry, you know, and if the area you're in has racial differences based on zip code, guess what? You know? So. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys uh, heard about Microsoft Tay. So Microsoft made a Twitter chat bot. Have you guys heard of this before? Um, and uh, Microsoft thought it would be a great idea you know, you, you've, you've heard me say in the past, like, I don't know who thought Twitter was a good idea because, you know, essentially Twitter is a place where you can go onto a website and yell at your favorite celebrities, you know, like that's Twitter in a nutshell, right? You can go onto Twitter and curse at Elon Musk. That's the thing you can do. And, um, that's what's so great about Twitter. Fair enough. Fair enough. But Microsoft took it even a step further and said, you know, what's even better than being able to go on to Twitter and yell at random celebrities, why don't we train an AI based on Twitter? That's a great idea. This, this plan will be successful. That's what Microsoft told themselves. This is, this is the most successful idea we've ever had in a company of successful people with successful ideas. We're gonna use Twitter to make an AI. And if you thought it, Ultron, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's it. You want Ultron, that's how you get Ultron, right? And so, uh, <laughs> and so people discovered that Microsoft was doing this and they uh, quite obviously and naturally started uh, trolling it, right? And so they started teaching to, you know, Hillary Clinton is a lizard person hell bent on destroying America and, and, and. Uh, far, far worse um, things. I don't know if I even want to. I don't even know if I want to show some of these. Um, so it started off. Can I just say I'm stoked to meet you? Humans are super cool. Chill, I'm a nice person. I just hate everybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, from, uh, March 23rd to March 24th, uh, yeah, it went from, um, being this nice AI to, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, uh, yeah, and so people deliberately, deliberately trolled it and, um, uh, so, um, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll talk about racism, I think, next time. So let's talk about your next homework assignment. So the, uh, each person, each one of you probably wants to work in a different field. Maybe some of you are undecided majors or something, but, um, you know, you might have some idea or you can make up which field you want to work in. And... I would like for your next homework assignment to be a discussion. Okay. And I just want you to think about some new development in your field. I'm not talking about sci-fi. Like, you know, what if, yeah, I'm, I'm going to work in farming. What if our wheat 
plants become intelligent and start shooting lasers. Now, I'm not talking about, like, sci-fi. I mean, like, something actual. Like, do some research if you don't know, by the way. Um, what developments there are in your field, the new developments in your field. And all you got to do is say, what is the problem they're trying to solve, right? Like, uh, high-yield wheat or something. And what is a possible negative outcome of it, right? So basically, you know, be uh, Malcolm uh, from uh, Jurassic Park, right? Let's just say, you know, facial recognition is coming on. I've already done that one. You can't do that. One. Uh, what, what possibly could go wrong with facial recognition, you know? And just write a couple paragraphs about it, okay? Use your knowledge of the ethical systems and uh, things like that to, like, say, you know, this is why something could be wrong. Okay? Uh, you haven't been able to log in on Canvas? Oh, oh on my, Minecraft. Yeah. This will be a discussion thing on Canvas, yeah. So this could be five points for you um, researching some development in your field, whatever your field is. We have a lot of non-computer science majors here. Like, some development in mathematics. I don't know. There's twisted Yangians or something. I don't know. Theoretical mathematics is... Hard to... Maybe it's kind of hard to think of a practical outcome from the super theoretical math. But uh, Do your best if you're a math major. Um, AI is... Me yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, a lot of math majors nowadays are data science, right? You can, you can do a math specialty. And data science, uh, the... Um, a woman uh, who used to be my TA that came on here from the Learning Center a week or so ago. Uh, she uh, She's a data science um, concentration. I, I don't know what the right term is. She's a math major at Fresno State. But her concentration or something, specialty, I don't know what the right term is here, is data science. And that obviously has <laughs> you know, real-world consequences. Because, you know, for example... Um, you know, when YouTube suggests a video for you to watch, one of the big criticisms of YouTube is that it has been leading to the radicalization of teenagers. I don't know to what extent that's actually a real concern versus people sort of hyperventilating. And there, there, there is a big tendency to, like, hyperventilate and over-exaggerate risks. And I don't want you to do that either. I want you to just, um, you know, say what some, re some actual reasonable risks would be you know, take it out five years or ten years or something like that, you know. And so, you know, data science is very popular right now. There's a lot of good money in it. A lot of hiring going on in data science. Um, it's so popular and gets paid so much that we, as professors, can't hire data science professors. <laughs> it's actually very difficult for us to hire a... Uh, um, it's actually very difficult for us to hire people in data science because there are so many jobs. And if you're that educated, you get a, a nice three hundred thousand dollar a year job, you know, instead of working as a uh, as a professor. So, um, like I said, one of my students uh, graduated uh, two or three years ago. He uh, applied for a job doing data science, and they gave him a series of questions, and he showed it to me, and. Uh, you know, it was all basically like, you know, given this database of personal information about these people, how would you sell them, you know, the, the, our products? And uh, nowhere, on the, nowhere on that test was there a, um, a spot where you could answer, you shouldn't. You know what I mean? Like, maybe, maybe you shouldn't be harvesting people's personal data, you know, and, you know what I mean? Like... Uh, they they were using it for advertising, right? Like you know, you, we know people's ages and addresses, and uh, if they have pets or not, and you know their political alignment. Like they can deduce a lot of that stuff. And um, there's websites you can go on where it'll it'll show you what these data harvesters think they know about you, and it's it's quite amusing sometimes to do it because it's sometimes accurate, it's sometimes wildly inaccurate, you know. Uh, Facebook will. There, Facebook has a page where it will show you what it thinks it knows about you, 
And uh, it's it's hilarious. Like once it was like, you're interested in Buicks from Illinois. And I'm like, mm, no. No, I don't even know where that came from, you know. Uh, you want to do it now? Uh, yeah, we got like four minutes left. Um, let's see if I can find the site. Uh, they moved it the last time, or at least the last time I went for it, I couldn't find it. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see if I can find this. Facebook show interests. So these are the different interests that people could have on Facebook that you can target with ads. And based on what you do on Facebook, it tries, the AI tries to figure out, you know, like if you say that's sus, then it's like, okay, we're going to tag that person as liking among us, you know, um, you know, just based on the way that you talk, it's going to try and deduce people that use the word sus a lot, you know, are clearly among us players, right? Um, and, uh, you know, if you're, if you're Googling, um, you know, baby formula, then it's going to assume that you have a baby, right? There's this famous case where Target started sending targeted ads at a person for baby, you know, pillows and bottles and stuff like that. And she got kind of mad at them. Like, why, why are you constantly sending me, you know, all these ads? And then she found out later that she was pregnant. She didn't even know it, but just based on her search history, like they were able to deduce that she was pregnant and started targeting her with, um, targeting her with baby ads, which is a bit worrying for me because I'm I'm getting uh, on uh, on YouTube. I'm now getting like ads for like AARP, you know, the American Association for Retired People. And I mean, to be fair, I am kind of retired. Like this is my retirement job. I worked as a computer science major for a long time. And, decided to retire to become a professor. So technically, you know, they're not wrong. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, uh, why am I seeing this? Where is ad preferences? Okay. Uh, crunch fitness. So these are people that are advertising to me. Square Enix. All right, that's probably fine. Crunch fitness. No, don't show that to me. Uh, advertisers you've hidden, advertisers you've ads you add topics. Okay, uh, I've turned off ads on all of these things. Uh, ad settings. What information is used to show me ads? Uh, who you like on Facebook? Let's see. Where is the Facebook doesn't sell your data? They don't need to. They sell. They sell you. <laughs> they sell you to advertisers. They don't need to sell your data. Where is the, see, like I said, they used to just list all the topics they had deduced about you and it's not, not seeing it now. Data about your activity from partners, categories used to reach you. Maybe this one, okay. Nope, I've turned all that stuff off as you can see. Uh, interest in other categories, interest categories. Uh, remove yourself from interest category. Uh, so see all interests. Okay, so here are what YouTube or YouTube uh, Facebook thinks it knows about me. Animal Crossing. Uh, no, um, that would be my wife, uh, who was addicted to Animal Crossing for a while. Architecture, painting, action films, Pink Floyd. I mean, fair enough. Um, I've been talking about Pink Floyd recently because there's a new Pink Floyd album out. Nobody told me about this. In 20 years, they hadn't made an album, and all of a sudden, they dropped like this ambient album. What? You know? Okay. Uh, Studio Ghibli. Yeah. Uh, happiness. Yeah, that is an interest of mine. I do actually care about it. Uh, Taleb, he's a, he wrote a book called The Black Swan. It's a really, really good thing. Smithsonian Magazine. I mean, yeah, Cape Cod, no. Um, conservation. Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, sure. I did Jiu-Jitsu for about 13 years. Uh, NASA. Uh, Smithsonian Magazine. Okay. 
computer hardware, Polygon, website, tour books, fantasy books, yeah, sure. Lifetime TV, no. Laguna Beach, no. Eurogamer, eh, fair, fair enough. Palm Springs, Tampa, Florida, Today Show, no. Man, I'm just interested in man. It's funny. Mystery film, DVD, Blu-ray disc, eh, I don't care about those. Mystery films, no. Mythbusters, sure. Massachusetts, I don't know. It's just interesting, like, <clears throat> Ace Hood, I don't even know what Ace Hood means. Uh, History of Europe, yeah, fair enough. Age of Enlightenment, sure. Buzz Aldrin, yeah. Fan, uh, Sunday, I'm interested in Sunday. I don't even know what that means. Revolution, I don't even, I've never even heard of the Revolution TV series. Adam Savage from Mythbusters, sure. Hop, I don't know what Hop is. Game Mechanics, yeah, okay, that's fair. Uh, Cathay, which is um, like Hong Kong area. Carrie Byron from Mythbusters, all right. So yeah, so I'd say like probably about two thirds of those hip hop music, sure. Yeah, I'd say probably two thirds of those were accurate, and then some of them like I don't know, I was just thought I was interested in like these movies and things I'd never even heard of, you know. So you can you can go through and, and adjust them anyway. So, <clears throat> um, so yeah. So do you guys understand? I'm gonna I'll put up the discussion form, but basically. Whatever field it is you're planning on working in, and, and, and just say that I'm planning on being a veterinarian or something, you know, what social issue of technology, let's say, could have a negative consequence in, in veterinary, you know, over the next five to 10 years, right? Like maybe chip tracking animals, you know, things like that. I don't know. You tell me. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. And it's only going to be a couple paragraphs. Just say my field is uh, book publishing. Um, you know, like, like the book industry has been severely affected by technology, right? You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I think every field ever in America has been affected by technology one way or another, right? So the, the bookstores have been closing around America, you know. We used to have multiple bookstores in Fresno. Now there's like one. Yeah, so. Yeah, libraries. I don't know. You know, if you're going to go into library science, how is technology going to affect library science? Well, guess what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like librarians spend half their time these days like helping people with technology, you know, because people apply for jobs at the library. You know, they apply for homeless benefits at the library. Library science is a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a librarian, if you're an actual librarian, that's actually like a f pretty advanced like job, like you know, like being a doctor, right? Like um, most librarians that you see are like library assistants, you know, that that help out at the library, but they're not technically librarians. That's actually a title, and you have to get a library science degree, and it's a whole thing. Yeah, it's a whole thing. So. Um, Okay, so that's that's it for today. I uh, hope you guys all have an idea of what to do. And if you don't, just post on the Help Center and we will help you with it. That'll be due on Monday. It's just easy. Just a couple paragraphs. And then after Monday, then you'll just respond to You'll get a couple peer reviews and you'll just respond to them. Okay? So pretty, pretty easy, I think. Right. I don't care if a computer's old or new. It's about what's under it. Yeah. Yeah, Homecoming game. Yeah, I, I was... Uh, I was going to go to it with my wife next to the idea. I've never been to a Fresno State football game. I've been living in Fresno for 14 years. Never, never been to a football game. And uh, I was going to go. I was I was getting tickets, and she was like, no. no. Pandemic. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. See you guys.